Hey everybody, Prepper Nurse One here. Uh, today is Wednesday. I don't even know what the freaking date is. <laughs> I woke the 10th of January, 2024. And uh, so, I want you to think about something. And I, I, I want to do a video about this. And, I, you know, the storms that we just had, you know, the, uh, the high winds power outages, the flooding, uh, you know, the tornadoes, the baseball size hail, uh, the the snow all over the place. Um, actually, I would have done a video outside today, but the winds are still pretty high here. Uh, we had more snow come in overnight, so we got maybe an inch of snow. I don't know if you guys can hear, well, you probably are hearing the fan um, from the heater being on, but I can hear the winds from outside as well. I brought the camera a little bit closer. I know some people were saying they were having some difficulties hearing me in the last video. But, uh, so, anyway, uh, I, I want you to, th you know, really put into perspective and to, and to think about this. I, I, I think people have this, this fantasy, uh, uh, you know, people talk about, uh, you know, uh, an, an SHTS scenario and, you know, the golden horde coming out of the cities and, taking everything from the countryside and, and I just it's a it's a delusion I think for people to think that you're just gonna go off and you're gonna you know go into the farmland and you're gonna take everything that you want and it's gonna be just a this big happy adventure and you know weather alone is really gonna limit what people do okay uh, so we're going to talk a little bit of reality and again the most likely scenario for any kind of an event a really major event to be perpetrated against the US would be in the winter time alright people are not going to be out there they're not going to be out running around in the woods and there's nothing to gather number one uh, you know it's winter it's cold uh, you know it, it just it, it's it would be so bad because people would not be able to go anywhere they would not be able to do anything and if they did they probably wouldn't last long anyway because we're, we're you know how are you traveling how you know if the roads are all you know clogged up with cars and you know you how are you going to get around and then you know anybody that's been out in any kind of winter weather really been out in any kind of winter weather and I'm not talking about going from your heated house to your heated car. I'm talking out there taking a walk all bundled up and trying to get somewhere. And then when you get there, you're, you're, you're like frozen to the core. Um, I've, I've lived in the Northeast for years and years and years. So um, trust me, I know what it's like. When you've got the high winds going, and it's cold, it will just cut through you like a knife, and you just don't want to be out in it. You want to be someplace where you can be warm. So there, there's a lot of interesting things that I don't think people take into consideration, um, you know, with that. So what, do you, what are you going to do when there's no help coming? There's nobody coming to clean up the streets. There's nobody coming to fix all the problems from the flooding. Uh, you know, the hurricane comes through or the tornado comes through and destroys everything. There's no emergency crews coming to pick up the pieces, folks. We're going to be on our own, okay? There's no help coming. So what are you going to do when there's no help coming? Again, I you know I I strongly encourage people to be prepared as best that they possibly can be. But I don't think a lot of people really truly get it. The scope of how bad things could be really, really quickly, really quickly. Things could turn ugly very, very fast. And I just, I don't think people understand that. They just don't, they don't get it. They don't understand the concept. Well, when you have a society like our society in the United States, that really hasn't suffered. Now, do we have homeless people here? Yes, we do. Uh, do we have people going hungry here? Yes, we do. But the majority of people are not feeling that they can't relate to that they will never understand that 
So they just think that everything's going to be fine, everything's going to be beautiful, and there's never going to be any problems, and everything's going to be great, and we're going to be okay. That's not reality. That is just not reality. So I want you guys to really sit down, think about what you would do. What, what would you, how would you plan things out? Where would, where would you go if you couldn't go anywhere? I mean, if you can't get out, if the weather is so bad that you can't get out, and then when you try to travel, it's not like, you know, I, I always laugh. Somebody had pointed this out, which I thought was really, really interesting. So you look at the show like The Walking Dead, and they're traveling, and they're driving around on the roads. They've pulled all the cars off the roads, and, you know, they, uh, you know they're out there driving around and everything. The roads are fantastic. They're in great shape. Well, that's not reality. The reality is, without regular, proper maintenance of the roads, the roads are going to deteriorate fairly quickly. And if you don't have those pathways to be able to move around, what are you going to do? Okay, so you're driving down and you're in your car, and all of a sudden, you hit an area that's had a washout from a flood. Uh, you're not going any further in that vehicle that way. So do you backtrack and try to find another way around? Or I mean, do you have the fuel to be able to do that again you know I mean it this delusion that everything we're just gonna go and we're gonna do this and it's gonna be like Mad Max that, that's not reality that's not reality and then and I want you to think about it in the south where it gets extremely hot okay you think let's talk about Florida people are so used to going from their air-conditioned car to their air-conditioned house to their air-conditioned job uh, you know, they're in and out of the weather so quickly because it is so hot that you don't want to be out there in it. Well, what happens when there is no air conditioning? You know, what are you going to do? Uh, a lot of people are going to die because of exposure, because they're not used to it. They don't know how to deal with it. Their homes are not built the way they were built back in the day to be able to be cooler, to take advantage of the breezes and all those type of things. And fresh water is going to be a huge thing. Huge thing. And like I said, people just don't have any idea. They just, you know, um, I've talked many times, many, many times about an SHTF situation. And I have said over and over and over again, my game plan with my group and my family is to hunker down and try to ride it out as much as we can. Because the longer that we can stay put here and not engage with other people, the better our chances of survival will be. That's a fact. Because while everybody, you know, they don't say that 90% of the population would be dead in a year uh, when SHTF happens. That's not an unrealistic number. It really isn't because people are unprepared, they're not ready, they don't know what to do, they don't know how to handle the situation. Uh, where's the food coming from? Where's the fresh water coming from? If you haven't planned uh, at least a little bit to give yourself that buffer, I love when people say to me, well, you know, eventually that food's going to run out. Eventually that, uh, you know, you're going you're gonna to run out of supplies. Well, the, the reason that we have the supplies is to get us to that buffer zone of the adjustment time to get to where we need to be, where we're growing our own crops and taking care of whatever animals we have at that point in time. Uh, you know, that's what people don't get. That's what they don't understand. And uh, I find that amazing. I really do. Uh, you know, prepping is not about, you know, well, I'm going to live on my supplies for the rest of my life. All the supplies are for is to get you through the initial hard times that are coming. Because uh, eventually, again, those supplies will run out eventually. And then you had better have figured it out by then, or you're going to be in big, big trouble. So, anyway, guys, I want to hear your feedback on this. Uh, you know, what are you going to do when there's no help coming? That's the question, okay? So, anyway... I hope everybody's having a good day. I hope you're preparing. I hope you're getting ready. Uh, you never know what's going to happen. So remember, we truly are all in this together. We're one race called the human race. As soon as we figure that one out and come together and work together, we're going to be in better shape. Also remember, 
to hug and kiss the ones that you love. Tell them every single day. Tomorrow's not guaranteed. We never know what's going to happen in life. So it's really important that we tell the people that we care about every day how we feel. Last but not least, STD. Step, thing, and day. One step at a time, one thing at a time, and one day at a time. Whatever you're trying to do, whatever you're trying to accomplish, you can do it. The only one stopping you from achieving your goals and dreams is you. That's it. Stay away from the negativity. Stay away from negative people telling you what you cannot do. Have a great day, um, and I will talk to you later. Prepper Nurse 1, out for now.